Jerry Z. and Muller, The Tyranny of Metrics. Dive into the captivating summary of The Tyranny of Metrics by Jerry Z. and Muller, a thought-provoking study about the harmful consequences of a society obsessed with measuring everything. This book tackles the common misconceptions about the benefits of metrics fixation while shedding light on the ways it distorts outcomes, encourages gaming the system, and leads to wrong prioritization. Gain a better understanding of how metrics misuse took place across various fields, including education, healthcare, politics, and businesses, and learn how to ask the right questions when implementing metrics in any organization. The Flaws of a Metric Fixation Those who believe in the transparency and accountability of numbers are mistaken. The flaw of a metric fixation is that it distorts information and incentivizes individuals to game the system. Calculating metrics on easy-to-measure things, quantifying inputs rather than outputs, and standardizing information all lead to cheating, manipulation and a decline in information quality. This summary highlights how institutions driven by metric fixation run the risk of excluding challenging assignments and rewarding subpar results. The Dangers of the Metric Fixation the metric fixation, or the obsession with quantifying data, has been prevalent in organizations for centuries, dating back to Victorian England where politician Robert Lowe based school funding on test scores. The fixation worsened during the 1970s and 1980s, with businesses and government agencies adopting the principal agent theory to incentivize employees. However, this model may not be appropriate for government agencies and nonprofits whose mission is not profit making. As organizations grow larger and more complex, executives may rely too heavily on metrics to make decisions, while managers become overwhelmed with reporting on their work. The use of metrics can lead to ignoring unquantifiable skills and experience. The author warns against the metric fixation, encouraging a balance between metrics and human judgment, especially in service-based industries where the mission is not profit-making. Gaming the Metrics in Education the American educational system heavily relies on metrics to measure and evaluate academic success, but these metrics are often manipulated for personal gain. Colleges lower their standards to increase graduation rates, while teachers and schools cheat on standardized tests. The No Child Left Behind Act and the College Scorecard are examples of government attempts to hold schools accountable, but they have not been entirely successful. Despite the emphasis on metrics, the achievement gap persists among various ethnic groups. The healthcare system in the U.S. The U.S. healthcare system is costly, yet ranks low in quality of care despite increased government involvement. The effectiveness of ranking systems and pay for performance arrangements are debatable, and culture and lifestyle can also impact mortality rates. However, metrics can be useful in pinpointing problems and creating targeted solutions. The United States healthcare system is on track to make up 20.1% of the country's economy by 2025, up from 17.5% in 2014. The Affordable Care Act aimed to decrease the financial burden on individuals and control costs while also measuring the performance of doctors and hospitals. However, despite being the first in per capita healthcare spending, the U.S. ranks poorly on the World Health Organization's ranking of medical care, sitting at 37th place. The U.S. also ranks 39th in infant mortality, 42nd and 43rd in adult male and female mortality, respectively, and 36th in life expectancy. Doctor and healthcare specialist Scott W. Atlas argues that these numbers are misleading and lack context as healthcare quality only accounts for a quarter of the WHO's ranking system. Culture, lifestyle, and financial fairness also contribute to the rankings, with American sedentary lifestyles and unhealthy diets leading to chronic diseases and higher mortality rates. Additionally, gun violence is more prevalent in the U.S. than in other countries. Pay for performance, P4P, arrangements and ranking systems can have flaws, including generating faulty metrics, incentivizing doctors to only accept low-risk patients, and focusing too much on hitting performance targets rather than improving medical outcomes. However, metrics can prove useful in pinpointing problems and implementing targeted solutions. 
For example, a five-point checklist to reduce central line infections in hospitals has resulted in a 66% reduction in bloodstream infections, saving thousands of lives and millions of dollars. Providers meet monthly to discuss their data and mistakes, ensuring everyone can learn from the process. In conclusion, the U.S. healthcare system is expensive and ranking systems and P4P arrangements are debatable, yet metrics can be effective in creating targeted solutions for medical problems and improving outcomes. Culture, lifestyle, and financial fairness also contribute to mortality rates. Paying for performance comes with risks. The use of pay-for-performance P4P, strategies is recommended for routine jobs. However, research suggests that compensating CEOs and top executives based on performance leads to imperfect measurements, a decrease in creativity, and a higher chance of fraudulent activity. Moreover, these incentives may replace an executive's intrinsic motivation with short-term extrinsic benefits, resulting in a loss of intrinsic motivation and poor performance in the long run. The 2008 financial crisis, for example, revealed the adverse impacts of assigning metrics in place of experts' experience and judgment. It highlighted how adding a layer of management and implementing performance metrics could create a destabilizing effect on the financial industry. Besides, the summary argues that transparency alone does not guarantee accountability and effectiveness in organizations like nonprofit organizations and charities. The focus should instead be on investing in quality employees and computer systems to improve productivity and efficiency. The pitfalls of metric fixation. Metric fixation can result in short-term thinking, encourage cheating, and discourage cooperation. It can also drain workers' time and degrade the work ethic. The use of metrics should be carefully considered before implementation. Leaders should ask themselves key questions such as what kind of information they are planning to measure, how useful the information is, and what the costs of acquiring the metrics are. Additionally, they should recognize that even well-designed metrics have limitations and that measuring cannot solve every problem. Metrics should be developed internally to ensure they have meaning and purpose. Ultimately, what gets measured is what gets attention, and leaders must be cognizant of the unintended consequences of metric fixation. As we reach the end of this enlightening journey through the tyranny of metrics, we're reminded of the dangers of a society fixated on measurement. Although adopting metrics may seem like a vital requirement for transparency and accountability, it often leads to distorted outcomes, cheating practices, and misguided priorities. From education and healthcare to politics and nonprofits, this metric obsession overshadows the more significant aspects of service provision and mission fulfillment. To avoid succumbing to the pitfalls of metric fixation, it's crucial to reevaluate our approach, understand the limitations of measurement, and ensure that we integrate experience and judgment into our decision-making process.